Welcome to the Engine Noise Podcast, Car News and Coffee, brought to you by 1AAuto.com. Quality auto parts and thousands of how-to videos that walk you through your installs. Headline number one, the Jeep Wrangler pickup truck debuts next month. I don't know actually what that means. Does that mean that it's for sale next month? I don't know. Has there ever been a Jeep Wrangler pickup truck? Uh, yeah, kind of. Oh. Have you, have you... Have you ever heard of anything like this before? Or is this totally no, new to this you? this is totally new to me. Okay. So this is great news then. So in 1981, you remember 1981, right? Uh, no, I wasn't born yet. But. Okay. So in 1981, Jeep came out with a Jeep Scrambler, which is like my eggs that I, I like. I was going to say. Yep. Throw some cheese on it. So 1981 to 1986, they had a Jeep Scrambler, which was a two-door Jeep Wrangler pickup truck. Well, not actually, it wasn't a Wrangler yet. It was a CJ8. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty much exactly what this is. It is a Jeep pickup truck. So it's a throwback. Yeah. They made them from 1981 to to 86, and they were actually pretty rare. They only made like 8,000 of them the first year, and then it went down from there. It was like 8,000, 5,000, 4,000. And then in 1986, there's just like legend of like 126 of them being made, but they're not even sure. I don't know that anybody actually has a 1986 Scrambler. It's a mystery, really. Mm. So the moral is, these are pretty rare. You don't see a lot of them. When you do, they go for huge money. Oh. Because they're super rare and super cool because it's a Jeep pickup truck. But the thing is, it's not like a regular pickup truck. It's a Wrangler with a truck bed. It's not like a separate bed like a normal truck has. Yeah. So anyway, the story is... Jeep is coming out with a brand new version of this, and their brand new version has four doors. So it's like a crew cab, Jeep Wrangler, pickup truck. It's pretty much everything you want. Cool. And it has the option of a 3.6 liter V6, which these things actually make a lot of horsepower. I want to say it's like 270 horsepower or something like that. That's not bad. Which is decent for a V6. Yeah. That's pretty good. The other option is a 2 liter four-cylinder turbo, which apparently only comes in an automatic from what I've read, which is kind of a bummer because I like turbocharged stuff, but I would not want to buy an automatic. Eh, save on gas mileage. Yeah, but it's an automatic. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'll just I'll just read a little bit of the headline here. The Scrambler name is just a rumor, so we don't know it's going to be a Scrambler or not. It might be something mm. totally, totally new. Over easy. But Jeep guys are going to call it a Scrambler, let's be honest. <laughs> but the new pickup truck version of the Jeep Wrangler is for real. The new model will make its official debut at the end of November at the 2018 Los Angeles Auto Show. The one big piece of information that we're still missing about the Jeep is the name. There's been speculation that it'll revive the Scrambler name first used in the CJ truck, but we're not sure if that will be the case, as Jeep may want to capitalize on the Wrangler's name recognition instead. After all, the new pickup truck will share its styling, underpinning, and powertrains with the new JL Wrangler. That's pretty much the deal. Oh, here's another fun fact. In Europe, you can get a diesel Jeep. Well, yeah. in Europe, you can get a diesel anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we can't have those in, in America no. because we just can't. No. Nope. At least not yet. There's like rumors floating around the old interwebs that maybe you can get one, uh, you know, 2020-ish or something like that. That'd be cool. There may be some, some diesel Jeeps rolling in. And there's definitely been some people that have swapped diesel engines into these Jeeps, and mm-hmm. that makes I'm it pretty sure. rad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as of right now, no diesels for us. Mm. So pretty much get your wallet ready because you're going to need to get yourself a new four-door Wrangler Scrambler pickup truck in the next year or so. Get one. Are you ready? I know you need a truck. I do need a truck. Is this it? Is this what you're going to get? I don't know. We'll see. (laughs) Have you driven a Wrangler before? I have not. Oh, man. You need need that Jeep life in your life. I don't know about that. Yeah. Like, maybe if I lived on the beach. Yeah, or if you live in the woods. Yeah, but I don't, so. No. <laughs> All right. I think I would like one. I'm just afraid of the price tag, because all Jeep Wrangler four-doors, like every one you look at, even used, is like $20,000. Mm. And it has like 80,000 miles on and it. And this is brand spanking new. Yeah, and this is going to be brand new. And if I had to throw a number out there, I would bet it's going to start at like $35,000 or something mm. like that. Yeah. There actually, a few years ago, you could buy... A brand new Jeep four-door, a JKU is what they call it, which is a, a unlimited version of the Jeep. And you could get those, and then you could have them converted into these pickup trucks. And it would cost you like 
some obscene amount of money. It was like $100,000 or something crazy. Okay. <laughs> and I'm hoping that Jeep is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit more financially sound with their with their decisions on what they price this one at. But yeah. we'll see. Keep an eye at your dealerships for the Jeep truck because you're going to want one and you may see one, I guess, towards the end of this month. Headline number two, Matt. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of Ken Block? I have heard of Ken Block. That's because he's awesome. Yeah. You know pretty, why he's awesome? Fun videos. Yeah, he makes Jim Connor videos. Mm-hmm. So this is this is like all the rage if you're a YouTube uh, enthusiast like I am mm-hmm. and a car enthusiast. He basically makes all kinds of awesome videos on YouTube of him just like hooning his cars around and like doing burnouts and donuts and stuff. Yep. Guess what his new ride is? I couldn't even guess. It's a 1977 F-150 with 914 horsepower and all-wheel drive. 914? Yep, that's right. Uh. Yeah, 914 horsepower, 702 foot-pounds of torque. How is that possible? Because it's a twin-turbo EcoBoost V6 from Ford out of, a, out of a Le Mans racing car. Or Ooh, Le, Le Mans. Le Mans. Is that how you say that? I don't know. You own one, don't you? No, mine's like a Pontiac Le Mans, though. Mine's like a <laughs> mine's American Le Mans. Le Mans. Yeah, not a Le Mans. <laughs> yeah, um, if if you're in Europe, I think it's a Le Mans. Oh, there's a space there. Yeah, exactly. Le Mans. So let's get to the story. Rally driver Ken Block, famed for his wild Jim videos, has finally turned the f- turned to Ford's most popular vehicle, the F-150 pickup. But it is no ordinary F-150. It's based on the 1977 Ford pickup. This Huna truck is absolutely wild and has a huge list of performance modifications that make it entirely appropriate for Block's antics. With its aluminum body shell, we need to talk about that, Matt. Okay. 77 Ford F-150, pretty confident it doesn't have an aluminum body shell. So that means they made this truck out of aluminum. Based off of a 1977 Ford? Wow. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like they just made a new 77 F-150 out of aluminum. That's, I do that every other Thursday. Oh, all right. So the exterior is otherwise festooned. That's the word I'm using. <laughs> with all manner of graphics, decals, and add-on, add-ons to denote the Huna truck as something special. Underneath, it's basically a new creation handled by tuner Detroit Speed Engineering. A twin-turbo, 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6 reportedly lifted from Ford's GT Le Mans, racing car, is under the hood, producing 914 horsepower and 702 foot-pounds of torque. All that power is routed through all four wheels, that's all-wheel drive, Matt, Mm -hmm. which Toyo Proxy ST3 tires wrapped around 20-inch Turbomac wheels, which are, I think, 1552s, which are pretty dope wheels. It sounds to me like they made a new 1977 F-150, and then they made it all-wheel drive, which it never came with, and then they put the engine in it with 914 horsepower. They didn't have that in 77? No, No. believe it or not. Uh, Even Bigfoot didn't have that kind of power, and (laughs) Bigfoot was a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think this is going to be pretty great. I'm kind of curious to know, like, what happens to his old cars? Do you think they go into, like, a museum somewhere? Maybe. Or do you think he parks them, like, in his lawn? He's got to have a spot that he just keeps them all. What do you do with the 10-year-old Hoonigan car that makes 1,000 horsepower and all you do is burnouts in it? Would you get bored with it? Uh, Probably not. I don't know. You just do burnouts. It's weird. And if you sell it, it's probably worth a lot of money. Probably. But it's also abused, like worse than any car yeah. you could ever imagine. I don't think anybody that was would buy it would care yeah. about it being abused. That's true. Yeah, I don't really know what to make of that, but I'm excited for I'm excited for the new videos yeah. that he'll make with it because you can pretty much be assured that he will be like spinning this around like buildings and there'll be helicopters, they'll be shutting down New York City and yeah. driving through New York City, and there'll be like um, Alf on stilts or something walking through <laughs> the video or all the normal stuff. Yeah, all the normal things that you'd find in a Ken Block video. So you can hop onto our Facebook page because we are going to actually share that Hoonigan video on the Facebook. And yeah, just go to Engine Noise Podcast on Facebook and you'll find us. Of course, you'll want to like our Facebook page while you're there. Do it. And then you'll be able to watch the video. Jeremy, it's time for you to stop hogging the mic. All right. Give me that. All right. Thanks. I'm reading headline number three. All right. I'm excited to hear it. I'm just going to read this, Jeremy, and try to understand what's going on here. Okay. But it sounds awesome. Okay. The Elephant from Mopar makes a thousand horsepower. 
Can yes. anyone top this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if anybody can. A thousand horsepower crate engine, the 6.2 liter Hell Crate, and it's 707 horsepower. Who would need more than that? Mopar thinks you do. The Elephant is based on a reworked aluminum Gen 3 426 CI block that has additional castings in the lifter valley and crankcase, heavy-duty internals, and a 3-liter supercharger. The dyno said 1,000 horsepower and 950 foot-pounds of torque, so be prepared to upgrade the transmission and maybe the drive shaft, differential, and brakes. The block has 4-inch stroke and 4.125-inch bore, and was drag tested in the 2018 NHRA factory stock showdown class before being modified for the street. Jeremy. Yeah. What yeah. the elephant did I just read? <laughs> okay. Let's just back this up a little bit. Mopar came out with, or I should say Chrysler came out with the Hellcat, which is a car that has 707 horsepower engine, and it's super fast. It does burnouts. You can buy them with, like, just a driver's seat so that you don't have passengers and you can make them really fast, and mm. they're awesome. They also sell a Hell Crate, which is just the engine from that car. And it oh. comes with all of the parts, so you can take the engine and throw it in your 1970 Barracuda or your Yugo or whatever you go-kart maybe, whatever you <laughs> want to put it in, your lawnmower. So one of those engines costs like, I want to say it's like $22,000 or something like that oh my for a Hell Crate. But it comes with everything you need, so you pretty much just plug it in and boom, done. Hmm. Easy. I could do it in my sleep. <laughs> so that's the Hell Crate, 707 horsepower. Now you can get the Elephant, which is basically 300 more horsepower from your Hell Crate. So it's a seven liter Hemi block and it's got a giant supercharger on it. It's got giant bore, giant stroke, and it's basically a thousand horsepower engine that you can buy at a dealership and just plug it into whatever you want. But you yeah. have to change stuff because if you don't, It'll blow the, the thing apart pretty yeah. much. Yeah, because not any transmission is just going to accept 1,000 horsepower going through it. So you're going to need to have a pretty serious transmission. Mm -hmm. Pretty much has to go in like a race car situation because only a race car transmission will handle 1,000 horsepower. Yeah. You're not going to like put this in your Corolla and bolt <laughs> and get an adapter plate. Why not? To go from your Corolla. That'd be a good test though. Corolla transmission to your, your elephant. You'd pretty much need a legit transmission, and then after your legit transmission, you need a legit drive shaft and rear differential, because a thousand horsepower through any of those things is just gonna like vaporize them, which is I would imagine pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I said, that's a good test. We should just do it. Yeah. You got twenty two grand that we can just get a Elephant engine and. I would bet the Elephant is a lot more than twenty two grand. Oh, the that's the Hell Crate. The Hell Crate, Sorry. I think, is around twenty two grand. Oh, the boy. elephant, I don't know what it costs, but I'm going to bet it's a lot. Mm. That's a lot of animals. Yeah. All right. So we have some other big news, don't we, Matt? Huge news. Huge. I would say international news. Uh, Maybe not that big? No, probably not. All right. Big enough. International for us. <laughs> okay. We are actually going to be dropping an extra episode this week. Because we did something awesome that we want to share with our listeners. That's right. We went to our local favorite racetrack, New England Dragway. They were nice enough to let us do some donuts and burnouts and basically have a whole bunch of fun on their property and not get arrested. It was awesome. So thank you to Joe Lombardo from New England Dragway for letting us do that. And be sure to listen a little bit later this week. We're going to have some video and we're going to have some audio for you to enjoy. While we were at the dragway, we actually got a ton of footage, and we have so much that we're actually going to drop a little kind of bonus footage on our own personal YouTube channels. We are? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. We should, right? Sure. Might as well promote them, am I right? Yeah, might as well. You can find my personal YouTube channel at rattymusclecar.com. You'll, you'll pretty much get there. That's the easiest way to do it. How about you, Matt? Mine's not going to be so easy. Oh, yeah? You're going to have to search for The Fixer. The Fixer. And go through, I'm sure, a couple few do a lot of home repairs, though, so look for that guy. All right. We're going to drop some kind of behind the scene footage over there, and you'll be able to see pretty much how much fun we had in New England Dragway. It was a blast. It was. So go subscribe to both of those pages, and you'll be able to see even more footage. Matt, you're not going to believe this. 
what? We have more big news. Oof, big news day. One Eye Auto, our sponsor, actually has this new product, and it's socket trays. Trays to hold your sockets, right? It's a six-pack. It's totally awesome. Actually, as soon as they put them on the website, one of my friends saw it and sent me a message, and he said, holy crap, I wish I didn't already buy these because the ones on oneiauto.com are such a great deal. Wow, that's crazy. Um, Did you tell them, return those and get the ones from one Auto? I didn't. I didn't. I should have. <laughs> we are going to be giving away a set of socket trays on our Facebook page. So go to Engine Noise Podcast on Facebook and like our page, and we're going to give away one of these things. Keep an eye out and watch for the post. Suck it to them, Jeremy. Wow. That happened. Also, we have more big news, Matt. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how I much know. more news I can take. You can't take it, right? It's crazy. So tomorrow is election day. That's right. So we are encouraging you to go out and vote. Got to do it. You got to do it. It's so easy. Just go vote. Do your civic duty. Hop in your project car and drive yourself down to the polls and get your vote in. Don't drive into a poll. No. Drive to the polls. <laughs> Not into the poll, Matt. Drive okay. to the polls. Drive to the Just polls. Just vote and vote do it. And that about wraps up our Engine Noise Podcast, Car News and Coffee. Engine Noise Podcast, Car News and Coffee is brought to you by 1AAuto.com. Quality auto parts and thousands of how-to videos that walk you through your install. Be sure to tune in to Engine Noise Podcast on the 1st and 15th of every month. And until then, have a little car news with your coffee. And go vote. Do it. Pick up your friends, grab some coffees, do a burnout, go vote. That's a good sequence, Jeremy. Yep. Yeah. That's the sequence I'm going to do. Yep. I might do a burnout before, too. Oof. So burnout, get in the car. No, wait. I can't do that, I no, guess. You gotta, no, you got to get in the car, car first. first. Yep. Okay. Get in the car. Get in the car. Burnout. Burnout. Coffee. Friends. Okay. Friends. Burnout. What if you got coffee for your friends? I'm not rich, Matt. <laughs> okay. Get the friends. Get the friends. Get the coffee. Coffee. And burnout. Then, another burnout. Vote. Vote. Burnout. Burnout on the way home. Right. Perfect. Nail it. Recycle your coffee cups. Exactly. Exactly.